In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to texture, uh, how to fully texture a realistic model. We're going to be taking a look at some more advanced techniques that are used widely in the industry for uh, for texturing props and characters. So for today, we're going to be texturing a spider bot that is part of the Substance Painter introduction uh, videos, uh, which you can also go over them by yourself. We're going to be using a little bit of a different workflow and some uh, of our own techniques. So for now, let's just create a new Substance Painter file. We're going to File, New, and uh, selecting our spiderbot.fbx. First of all, I'm going to change the document resolution to 2K for now, and I'm going to select my spiderbot file, like so. Afterwards, we create the file, we create the project. We should be able to see our spider bot. Now, if I click on F1, I can see both the uh, both the model and the view in the to the viewport, the UV map, and we can see that this uh, model is uh, uh, has two material slots or two texture sets: one for the body and one for the legs. At any point, you can hide and unhide both of these two textures. Uh, we do have references for texturing our spider bot, which I have uh, on my second monitor, but I will uh, also have them up for this video as well. I will, always, I will also send out the pure file so we can also uh, take a look at the same references that I'm going through. So for now, let's uh, start with the project. Before we actually start uh, detailing and texturing our model, uh, I would like to say a couple of things to uh, how to on how to improve your viewport a little bit. Now, when we texture, uh, for now it's kind of acceptable quality, so it's not the greatest, but it's not bad in any case. But we can definitely uh, improve our viewport a lot more. So for starters, we're going to go into the display settings and we're going to turn on the shadows. So once we turn on the shadows, we can see that instantly our model looks a lot better and we can see a lot clearer how the details will affect our model. Once I also I always uh, bring down the shadows opacity a little bit, maybe some something like 80. And if you can, you can also use the computation mode to intensive, but it doesn't really matter. Most of the time I work with lightweight computation mode. Now, another thing that we do is activating the temporal anti-aliasing. So we can activate the temporal AA in our project and uh, we can see that right now it is kind of semi-rendered while we are working on the uh, project. Also, if you can, if your machine allows you, you can also use 32 samples, but this is uh, purely for uh, a better viewpoint. You don't need to do anything of these. If you start feeling like your uh, scene is clogging up and uh, it's having lower FPS than you would want it, you can always uh, disable the AA, you can disable the shadows and so on. Another thing that uh, I would like to do is increase the quality of the shaders. So uh, to have it on high, medium or high, most of the time I work with medium, but if I can, I work with high as well. Uh, just for preview, sometimes I use ultra, but that's when I don't want to render out a full image. I just want to get a preview of what my final uh, model would look like. So most of the time I use the medium quality preset, like so. Now we can see that our uh, viewport is a lot clearer and a lot more crispier. and we have better viewport. Okay, for now let's start. Uh, let's start creating the textures for our model. Before we do anything, we always want to bake our model. Now, if you click on Bake Mesh Maps, or just Control Shift and B to bake maps. First of all, as we said before, output size we're going to be selecting on 4K because when, if we want to move up to 4K in our texture, we would like to uh, we, uh, we would like to have that option of the baked maps. So let's 
increase the output size to 4K and also because we do not have a high poly mesh uh, for this character we're going to be using the use low poly as high poly mesh option. Now uh, one thing that we need to change before we start baking is that we need to change the ID map. We're going to take a look in a second what the ID map does but just uh, for now we're going to change the color source of the model to vertex color instead of material color. We're going to take a look in a second what that will do to the model. Now we're, we don't want to bake a normal map so we're going to deselect the normal map because we don't have a high poly character and we don't want any uh, insignificant normal artifacts or anything that will uh, change on our model because we don't actually have any details extra on our character. Now let's bake our textures. So bake selected textures. And let's see how all of that will work out. Now with the bake with the bake maps, we can see that our model is a lot better. With the ambient occlusion, especially, it adds a lot more depth to our character. All of the other maps we are going to be using for uh, different uh, types of materials and masks in a little bit. Uh, before we start, before we continue, uh, let's take a look at the ID map that we baked. In the previous video, we don't really, we didn't really talk about the ID map that comes with the baking. So for now, let's go and select the ID uh, in the viewport. So let's take a look at the ID maps. We can see that uh, in the ID map, when we select the ID map, we have a bunch of different colors on our character. If we look at the, uh, if we take a look at the references from this uh, spider bot, we can see that we have a couple of different colors mainly a red and a green or blue more like a green and we can see that uh, in the viewport we also have two of those differentiators so this is not red but it doesn't really matter the id map basically works as a map when we click on a, when we do a mask with a color selection if we select the green part of the model it will only mask out everything that is green on our model same with the blue it will only mask out anything that is blue on our model we can see that uh, we do have an id map for the body but we do not have an id map for the legs that's because when we bake both textures at the same time it can only bake out a ID map from one texture set. So now let's just go to the uh, bake mesh maps again and just uh, use the ID map for the legs. So now we just bake the legs. Once that's done, we can see that we have both ID maps for the uh, for the body and for the legs. Let's go back to the material viewport like so. Okay, so let's start actually texturing our model. This first layer that's automatically generated, we will delete it because we don't need it. And let's start uh, coloring. Now, we don't, uh, we don't wanna go through all of the process uh, manually. So we don't actually want to create all of the textures ourselves. Uh, we, we want to uh, use already uh, pre-made uh, materials and just mask them out to uh, color or texture our model. So for now, let's just type in steel because our model is most likely made out of steel and we can see that we have a couple of different steel options. Now we can try both of these and see which one would work best for our model. Maybe this one. Let's add it to our character and we can see that it is quite similar to the one we need. So it's basically the same, but we do have to make a couple of tweaks. Now, if I take a look at the smart materials, uh, we saw previously that uh, the materials that we used, if I, let's say, I drag and drop a material here, it is uh, just a simple layer. 
all of the smart materials are basically grouped up in uh, one folder. So they are kind of like many different materials that are grouped up to make one smart material. Now we can see that we have, let's say we have the paint. So the paint is basically the color of our model. We have the roughness variations. So some small details. We have the dirt. So if we uh, if we take off the dirt, we can see uh, we can see how it, how it affects the model and also the sharpen mask. Also, we have the base metal. So this is what is underlying all of our paint. So under the paint, we can see that we have a base metal. For now, uh, let's actually create our own. Uh, for, for this example, let's create our own uh, paint material. So I'm going to delete the paint for now. And let's create our own. We're going to use this uh, material as a base and afterwards just add some color to our model. For now, let's add a new fill layer like so. And let's uh, remove everything except for the color value. In the color, let's select a red color. Uh, the way we do that is we can we can click on the color and with the color picker, we can select the red color from our template. Apart from the references, I will also provide uh, I will also provide a swatches image where you can uh, pick out the colors for the model. So let's start texturing our model. Uh, the way we start texturing is uh, we can use already pre-made smart materials. For example, we have some sort of, let's say, steel painted material like this. That will give us a really nice head start over, uh, over our model. But for today, we want to create uh, these materials on our own. So for now, let's delete uh, these uh, materials and let's create our own uh, the base will be our metal so for the base we can actually use let's say maybe aluminium yeah it's it's quite nice so let's use the aluminium as our base this will only be uh, the base of our model now above that we want to start adding the paint the scratches the dirt and all of the other surface details now let's add a new fill layer above our above our uh, aluminum. Now, uh, first of all, you have a swatches image where you can see the color scheme of the model. This will all, this will also be provided uh, to you, so that we can just pick out the colors that we need for our character. Now, first of all, let's uh, select the fill layer, remove everything except for the color like so and select the red color like this we can see that uh first of all the uh the model and our reference is a lot less shiny this is a lot of a lot metallic now to get the same view we can uh update the metallic value so let's select the metallic channel as well and we can see that just by clicking on the metallic channel this will basically remove the uh, previous metallic value from the aluminium. We can see that if we go, uh, if we bump up the metallic value, it's a lot shiny, a lot shinier, and we don't actually want that. So let's just use the, uh, let's just set the metallic to zero. Now, before we jump into anything else, we actually want to mask out where the red paint will be. So let's call this red paint for now. Just double click on the layer to rename it and let's start adding some masks. Let's add a new black mask, but now uh, we're going to add a new mask with color selection. As we said previously, we have an ID map right now on our model and uh, let's take uh, let's take that map to our advantage. So let's select the mask, add a mask with color selection and now we can see that it is uh, completely removed. So it's the same as adding a black mask. 
Now uh, we see that we have a color selection here and we can use that color selection. So in the colors, we can pick a color. Uh, where do we want this red paint to appear? So let's click on the green and we can see that it will now it will only paint uh, the green part of our model like so. Now, uh, to add a, another mask on top of this mask, uh, we can add uh, we can add another mask like this. Maybe add a fill or add a paint layer, but we don't actually want to do, uh, to do that. The easiest way is to add uh, basically group uh, this paint. So put it inside of a folder and let's rename this folder to uh, wear mask like so now why do we do this uh, we do it because we can see that on the edges of our model we have some uh, some of the underlying uh, some of the underlying metal showing so we can see that on the edges here we have some other metals showing uh, we can add a black mask let's say or maybe a white mask would be better and uh, maybe paint it out by hand where of the uh, where these metals should show up but this is a lot more tedious and a lot harder to do by hand and we can just use some generators to do it for us where can we find th these generators you can click on the uh, on the first button on the add effects and we can add a generator now what do generators do? They take information from the, let's say, curvature map, from the thickness, position, ambient occlusion map, and they combine it to make some sort of effect. If we scroll through the, let's say, curvature map, we can see that all of the edges on our model are a lot brighter than the base or model. So we can use that information to basically mask out all of our edges. How do we do that? We select the generator. So we can click on the generator and add a metal edgeware. We have a metal edgeware generator. And we can see that right now the red paint is only appearing on the edges of the model. Now we don't actually want to do, uh, to do that. We actually want to invert it. So we want uh, the red paint to not appear on the edges, but to appear on, any, on everything else. To do that on, on the generator we have a button here that's called invert and we can just invert it to show up like so. Now we can start playing around with the generator a little bit. So first of all we see that we have a wear level. This wear level uh, basically means how much of, uh, of our generator will show. Because we have uh, inverted it so we selected invert to true everything will work in the opposite direction so if we uh, if we bring down the wear level we can see that there are, there is more of the red paint if we bring up the wear level we can see that uh, there is more of the uh, baseline aluminium showing so the wear level basically increases and decreases how much of the uh, underlying metal we can see apart from that we can also use the contrast the contrast is basically how harsh the, uh, the generator is. So we can see that uh, if we increase the contrast, it's a lot sharper on the edges. And if we bring it down, it's a lot more softer, like so. We can also uh, alt and click on a map to see how that, how that map actually affects our model. So now when we change the wear and tear level, like so, we can see it in real time how it affects the uh the character now this is all fine uh we want the wear mask to stay here but we also want to add blue color to our model so we have the red color on and now we want to add some blue color also we want uh apart from that also to add a uh, red color as well uh, i mean not red but black color on the back of the backpack so for now let's just make another fill layer bring up our swatches map and uh, not a normal layer but a fill layer remove all of the values except for the color like so and also the metallic 
and make it zero. Now let's add the same mask. So add mask with color selection and let's pick the color appropriate to our model like so. Now we can always change our base color to be whatever we want. Let's just use the picker and select the color from the color palette like this. Now let's do the same thing again for the uh, for the black. So for the back, let's just rename this fill layer to blue paint or green paint, actually green paint. And let's add a new fill layer, call it black paint and add a new mask with color selection. So add a mask with color selection and select the back part of our model like so. Now we can disable uh, the height, roughness and normal, bring down the color to something like this, maybe a little bit lighter. And we can see that we basically have all of our base colors done. Now, the next step uh, would be to the next step would be to add uh, some more dirt to our model. You can see that uh, we have some wear and tear. That's the same uh, as in our reference, but we don't have that much dirt. We can see that the original reference is a lot more dirtier. Now, uh, also be careful to always have uh, to have your three paint layers. So the black, green and red paint inside of your wear mask, because this is what gives us the uh, wear level on our model. We can see that if we hide and unhide the metal edge wear, that it adds a lot more detail to our model. Maybe we can actually bring down the grunge amount a little bit so we can see what the grunge amount does. We can increase the wear level a little bit for now and decrease the grunge amount. Let's just add just a tiny bit of grunge so we can see some of the details, but we don't actually need much of them. Like so. Now let's add on top of this a dirt layer. So let's add a new layer. Let's get some dirty color, maybe something like this. We're just going to eyeball this color like so. And let's add, let's rename this to dirt and let's add a new black mask. Now for this, uh, for this part, we want to use another generator. So be careful not to click on your fill layer and add a generator to your fill layer because this will not work on our uh, model. We always have to add the generators to the black mask. So be careful to click on the black mask and afterwards add a generator. Now let's use the dirt function to add some dirt to our model. We can see that we have basically the same options. So we have dirt level, we have dirt contrast, grunge amount and also grunge scale. So for now, let's increase the grunge amount a little bit and bring down the dirt level just a tiny bit. Maybe lighten the dirt a little bit more, something like this. The good thing about uh, this type of workload is that we can always uh, we can always change the value. So if I wanted to have, let's say, uh, blue dirt, I can always change the color to blue. So it's a very non destructive workflow and we can always go back and forth between our decisions. Okay, uh, for now, I think we have uh, the base material done. Now, uh, how do we actually transfer it to our other model? Now, uh, 
because uh, the way the way that this character is set up, we can see that in the reference. If we open up the ID mask like this, we can see that in the reference, all of the all of the red parts of the character are the same color. So we can see that on the legs as well. Our model uh, is also green where the red parts are red. And we can go back to the material. Right now, we've only been texturing the body. Now, if, if, if we want to texture the legs, we would have to do the same process once more. So it's basically the same process, just going over it once again. Now, we don't actually want to do that. Uh, we want to kind of copy it to the legs, but we don't just want to copy it. We want to instance it. So how do we do that is by selecting all of our three, uh, all of our three layers or materials clicking on ctrl and g to add uh, a new layer to add a new folder and renaming it to uh, let's say spider bot maybe material like this or spider bot let's say colors for now now the way that we transfer it to the legs is by right clicking on it and using the instantiate across uh, texture sets now if we click on that because we only have one other texture set list uh, we can see that it automatically selects the legs and we can click on ok now once we click on that we can see that it automatically transferred all of our our textures to the other uh, texture set so all of these are transferred as well to the legs now if we open up the legs we can see that it's not actually a folder a folder like uh, like it is in the body texture set if we click on this button right here we can see the hierarchy from the instances we can see that this is the uh, topmost on the hierarchy and we also have another one instance right below it now uh, we cannot actually change this uh, this layer. We can just hide it and unhide it. But the way we change this layer is by going to the body and changing the properties here. So these are basically copies from one another, but they work simultaneously. So, for example, if I wanted, let's say, to change the red paint to something a little bit more darker, I can change it on the body and it will automatically change on the legs as well like so the same works for any other function of our model and maybe decrease the dirt level a little bit yeah, now it looks a lot better now once we have that done we can go into uh, a little bit more into the detailing part now we can see that uh, on our on our reference we have a lot more uh, height maps and height details on our character now in our uh, in our case we don't actually have any of those details so we need to start adding them now uh, the way I do this I most of the time I like to just add a new paint layer above so not in the folder but above it and i just like to call this separator like so this will basically tell me uh where uh, where my paint layers and where my fill layers are all of these layers are fill layers and all of the layers above will be my paint layers so let's add a new paint layer now and what we're going to do is we're going to start adding some height details uh, what we can also do is go to the perspective view so we have perspective and we have orthographic most of the time when I work with symmetrical characters I like to work inside of an orthographic view because I can see the symmetry a lot better we can see that if it's let's say in, uh, in perspective view we can see that uh, it's not actually uh, uh, dead center all the time so if I go to the 3d model view press tab to open up the full screen i can see that if i move my character left to right i can see more of the right side here and more of the left side here if i go to the orthographic view no matter where i put my character i will always get the same result 
So let's click on tab again. And let's start adding some details. Now, when we paint with our uh, with our paint layer, we don't actually want to paint any color values. The only thing that we want to paint is a normal map. So how do we do that? Let's let's deselect all of these and let's go to our asset folder. Now, to add all of these details, let's first of all select our paintbrush. Uh, remove everything except for the normal map and let's uh, select our textures menu from our assets like so now we can search right here about normals and we can see all of the available normal maps uh, inside of inside of substance painter now uh, we're not going to be uh, detailing every single one of uh, the details on our model but we're just going to be uh, adding a, uh, some details so we can see how this workflow works basically okay let's delete uh, all of the channels go uh, select some of the normal maps so maybe this one we can start off with this one and we can see that now if we for example click anywhere on our model and we can start adding some uh, normal details to our model like so now we can see that we can't actually see the details before we add them onto our model so to do that we can go to the brush preview settings right here and we can see uh, we can click on the full preview cursor so let's click on that one and we can see that now we can also see the normal map that we will be applying to our model okay so right now uh we can see that we have uh we can add some of some uh some details to our model first of all let's uh rotate our brush about 90 degrees like so so we can add horizontal details Go to the front view and just add a couple of details to our map. Now, you can see that uh, it's kind of cut off from the sides, like so. The way we fix that is by selecting a different alpha mask. Or we can just completely disable the alpha mask. Now, by doing that, we don't actually have an alpha mask that will uh, cut out our brush strokes. So for now, let's just increase uh, increase the normal map a little bit. And we can start adding some details. I'm not going to go completely uh, from the reference. I'm going to freehand some of the details on my own. But basically, it's the same thing. Now, whenever we want to add a different normal map, you can just select, let's say, something like this. And let's add some normal map details like so. The way we rotate a mask like this is just by holding down control and with the left mouse button going up and down. And let's add some details to our character. We can maybe add some lines or maybe a bevel beveled circle so let's add a beveled circle go to the top click in the middle like this maybe add a beveled line so a little bit smaller now if we want to reset the angle you can just scroll up in the paint layer and reset the angle now we want to have a 90 degrees angle like so and add a detail to our character
Now, once we are done with adding our details, uh, we can start to uh, we can start to add a couple of filters to make them look a lot better. Uh, the first thing that we can do to look at our uh, to look at our uh, details a little bit better is by adding a filter. Now, the same as generators, we can also add filters. Filters are pre-made sets from Substance Painter that can enhance or add some effect to our layers. So for now, let's add a matte effects. Uh, let me just find it. Matte effects. H O. So we add a matte effects HBAO and we can see that it uh, it will drastically improve our ambient occlusion on our uh, normal maps. Now another thing that we can do is just for preview let's increase the texture set settings to 4k on our character to see how they would look like if they were 4k now we can see that they are a lot better if you can if you can if your computer allows you to uh, work in 4k I would hi highly recommend it now the last thing that uh, we would have to do uh, to finish up our model is to add the decals or uh, more, put, more uh, importantly, the uh, number and the lettering on our character. Now, how do we actually add those? Let's go back to the layers and let's add a new fill layer, like so. On this fill layer, let's rename it to decals, or let's uh, call it maybe decal number. And uh, let's change the color to be white, like this. And for now, remove all the other properties. So just uh, have a white, simple white color. Now, how do we actually uh, make the number five? Let's start by adding a black mask to our decal number. So first of all, let's add a black mask to our uh, to our fill layer, and let's disable the symmetry for now. And we can see that we can start writing it, but this doesn't look nearly as clean as it did before, as it is on the reference. So for uh, to make it look a lot better. First of all, we're going to add a fill. So basically what uh, the add fill button does, it is it adds a fill layer into our black mask. So if we click on add fill in the add effects, we can see that uh, by default we have some sort of a grayish color and we can see that if we move it left to right, it will affect the whole underlying fill layer. Now we want to add an alpha mask to this fill layer. To do that, we're gonna go to the asset library and we're going to type in font. Like so. Now, when we type in the font in, inside of uh, Substance, when we, we are using uh, the font alphas, if we add them to, let's say, a black mask or a fill layer, whatever we want to, we can, uh, we can actually input a text file into them. Now, let's open up the uh, let's open up the second viewport as well, and we can see that we actually have a substance already inside of this fill layer. Let's scale it down a little bit for now, and move it maybe somewhere that we can see it, like so. You can see that we can uh, actually see the details onto our model. 
Now, we don't actually want to fill it up uh, like this. We want to use another type of projection. Decals are always used as a either triplanar or, uh, uh, or planar projection. So we don't need to, we cannot use the UV projection or the fill. Let's use a planar projection for now. And let's see how that actually works on our model. Uh, right now, we can see that uh, we can move around. We have a gizmo up in our, 3D, in our Substance 3D scene. And we can move the decal where we want it to be. Now, because we have a lot of substance and names, we only, we only want to have one of them. Uh, to remove all of the other and just leave one, under UV wrap, we are going to be selecting none. Now, what that does is it only adds a single substance decal, nothing more. You can also rotate this, let's say 90 degrees, maybe like this. Move it. The shortcuts are the same as in, uh, let's say, uh, Maya or any other software. Now, let's change this from being substance to, uh, to five. So under text, let's change it to five. Now we can, uh, we can scale our decal like so, move it out somewhere around here, scale it up a little bit extra and place it onto our model, like so. Maybe a little bit to the right. And we can see that it also adds it to the back. Now, to remove it from the back, we have a option here that's called back face culling. If we enable that back face culling, we can see that it's not applying it to the back of the decal. Now we're going to be uh, duplicating this one. So control and D to duplicate it and changing it to changing the font to whatever we want. Let's just type in substance for now. Scale it down. Maybe something like this, rotate it by 90 degrees. We can also rotate it. Uh, we can also rotate it here. So we have rotation, 3D projection settings. We have rotation. We can rotate it by 90 degrees on the Z axis. So not nine, but 90. So, and just slap it on top of our model. We also would have to rotate it by 90 degrees on another angle. So let's rotate it by 90 degrees. Like so, minus 90. And let's slap it on top right next to the five. Now, once we do that, we actually want to add some uh, want to add some wear and tear to this layer as well. So both of these layers, I'm going to combine them or group them up. So Control and G, and then just add a white mask. So I don't want to remove anything, and also add a generator to that white mask. So Let's select maybe the dirt generator. Now we can see that our uh, our numbers, our decals are a lot more uh, roughed up. Now I want to de increase the dirt level on my map just to show them a little bit better. And also maybe bring down the opacity of the layer as well. So we have something in between. 
After that, we are basically done with the spider bot.